Tom and I had uh, strangely similar backgrounds, you know, tough life, uh, broken homes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, although he did have uh, parents, uh, but it was a difficult life for him. And we also had seen a lot of uh, the rough side of, of, of life. Um, and um, we would use that experience in talking to kids about uh, the ills of, of what was going on at that time. Um, during that time in America, drugs were relate, uh, relegated to the black community. Every, every time you hear about drugs, they would, they would use uh, something in the black community as an example of, see, this is what's happening in drugs. Very little discussion about what was happening in the white community. And then uh, the late Art Linkletter's daughter jumped out of a window and killed herself in suicide. And she was heavily involved in, uh, I think, psychedelic drugs or something at that time. And that changed the whole face of the drug movement. So we were we volunteered to go into the community in, 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 that I lived at that time outside of Chicago, a place called Harvey, Illinois, and um, and talk to these young kids uh, about the ills of kills, you know, you know all the things that they were getting involved in that was actually growing rapidly in, in the communities around America uh, after the '60s. This is now '68. 69 uh, and that's when the, the big push that, that drugs came into our society uh, and it was a very successful program it was picked up by uh, all of the jc chapters throughout america in 16 foreign countries and uh, we won some awards for that program basically it was just two young guys standing in front of me saying hey guys you know we're not here to scare you. We're not here to talk about, you know, look at us. We, you know, we were drug addicts and we're here to tell you how it was like for us to grow up and how we survived. Uh, my uh, stepfather um, uh, was a heroin addict. And I used to watch him as a kid shoot up and do things. And I saw how he treated my mother was very abusive. And so it put a negative imprint on me. Uh, so I saw drugs early on in life, uh, what it did to the psych psychic nature of a human being and how it could destroy uh, the lives of people. And so I had a, I had a very negative um, opinion about drugs, and, uh, including, by the way, uh, alcohol. I mean, because um, as I said, my grandmother sold whiskey, so I never saw the glamour part. It wasn't somebody with a camera going, hi. You know, it was, it was fist fights. It was... Uh, and it was a very aggressive thing for me. And we talked about that with the students, being real about it. And we used humor. And uh, Tom was then and still is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. And uh, that caught on. Kids used to say, matter of fact, to this day, we know the young lady who said to us in class, you guys are funny, you ought to be a comedy team. <laughs> and so, one day we uh, thought about it in the bar, having a beer, and he said, you thinking about it? Yeah, you want to try it? He said, yeah, let's try it. And that happened. So how did you go about putting an act together and writing material? Oh, that was uh, certainly wasn't the easiest part. Um, as I said, um, uh, I'm a storyteller, and so is Tom. Uh, Tom is actually a far more accomplished storyteller than I am. And, um, we sat around my kitchen table. Uh, his his wife and, uh, was not for it. Uh, my first wife and Rita was always uh, saying, "Go do it." You know, if I told her I was going to be an astronaut, she'd pack me a lunch. So uh, we'd sit around the kitchen table and talk about uh, what we thought an act would be, and we watched a lot of uh, the Tonight Show and all that stuff. Were yeah. there other other comic influences? Did you listen to albums? Well, yeah. Oh, yes. I have. I still have one of the better. Uh, comedy collections uh, and albums, you know, Lord Buckley, you name it. We have all the, we would, we went out and I bought every comedy record from Pigmead Markham to Moms Mabley to Red Fox, Richard Pryor, who was my favorite comedian at that time. I'd seen him on the Ed Sullivan show. And, um, and then we would, Chicago was a wonderful place to start a career. Still is one of the better places to start a career because you, you get a, a nice sec, uh, section of performers at the top and those who are breaking through to the top. Um, and so we hung out at all the places. Uh, it's a wonderful club. It's probably one of the best nightclubs in the history of American entertainment, Mr. Kelly's. 
And so we would go there and see everyone, Bob Newhart. I mean, you, 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 you would see everybody there. And uh, so we, we hung out at a lot of the, the coffee houses and, you know, we tried to get into Second City, but they thought <laughs> young, young black man and, you know, this white guy, you know, Italian looking guy. Now we don't have, you're not funny enough. You don't look funny. So they wouldn't let us in. Uh, I will never forget our audition for them. Uh, it's uh, kind of heartbreaking. But we ended up uh, hanging out at the Playboy Clubs and Dick Gregory and all those wonderful people. And we would always figure out a way to meet with them and talk to them, Jackie Byrne. I mean, you name it, you know. And there was a gentleman by the name of Herb Cupson. Herb Cupson was, uh, he was the toast of, of uh, Chicago entertainment. He had a column in the Sun-Times and everybody wanted to be in Cup's column and he had a TV show. And so, um, we worked our way to to get on his show once and, and working the clubs and he he took us under his under his wing and 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 got us into mr kelly's and and it was just one thing after another for about five and a half years we worked around became a, a part of the playboy circuit and just kept writing and trying material 